everyone. It's finally here. Datacrons have gone live today at time of recording. And they have been pretty divisive already with their pre-release announcements and I've already seen some continuation of such divided and fierce opinions going on even within my own guild so I'm sure it's happening out in the community at large so what I want to do today is take a look at day one the immediacy of the impact that Datacrons currently have on the game while they are able to be used in Grand Arena and Territory Wars we currently are not having either one of those events at the moment so we won't be able to see the gameplay impact of a Datacron yet but we still have plenty of other aspects of the game that we can look at and evaluate and other aspects of Datacrons that we can talk about today so stick with me and let's start exploring so what exactly are Datacrons? And I think the easiest way to remember it and to think about it is that Datacrons are mods for squads. You can remember that little rhyming tool? I think you got it. Datacrons are mods for squads. So to look at our Datacrons, we're going to come into our collections tab We uh, the other day and the update we got a nice tab for our datacrons I've already got one at level 3 this is the one that I got for free in my inbox with the introduction of this update and then this is one that I picked up a little bit later we will take a look at the uh, datacron shipment page where I got that and we'll take a look at that and talk about the goods and bads that it has there. So looking on this page right here, it looks like it's going to be organized by season. Uh, looks like you know we see that this is the Treaty Z Inquisitorious section, and that that'll be with us until September. So I imagine when we get the next round, we'll have a you know divider line and with all of those ones under there. So and hopefully they look visually distinct. From what we already have so that way it just helps i'd hate for all of them to look like this but uh you know i would say i am gonna give cg the benefit of the doubt but uh i'm not so to continue we'll first take a look at the datacron that i've already leveled up and then we'll take a look at my other one which i've only done one level so that way we can see the process going through so when you get a Datacron, it's going to start at level zero, and you have to you know, unlock it, is the, the terminology, if I remember correctly. So you use the uh, material and the currency, and you'll unlock level one. And so here's where my saying that it's a mod comes into play, because just like mods, each you know level has a role for a stat boost. And you can tell what the prereqs are for characters to receive the benefit uh, by looking in the right of the boxes. So this means Relic 3. So I need an entire squad, an entire team, to be Relic 3 in order to apply this Datacron. And I believe this is going to be consistent across the future. We'll see Relic 3 being the minimum for application onto a squad. So currently my Relic 3 teams will benefit from all three of these stats. I leveled up to level 1 and got 1.94% health. And over here on the right we can see a breakdown of the potential roles and the range with which each of these specific roles can be done. So I got health which has a range of 1-5% to and it actually shows me where my role landed so kind of on the low side there for health and I'm a bit underwhelmed with the role of health you know uh, crit damage would have been nice potency tenacity are always nice health steal is pretty cool there's not a lot of things in the game right now that affect health steal other than just 
gear and relic level uh, or leadership or unique abilities um, it's very very minor so this is I was pretty excited to see health steal being a you know an effective stat and we can see when I leveled up to level two I rolled really dang well on my health steal you know, so at minimum I could have gotten 50% at maximum I could have got plus 100% and I rolled pretty dang high almost to the to the max potential for that roll now where they start kind of differing slash are still actually kind of similar to mods is that every set amount of levels instead of increasing your primary stat like on a normal mod every couple of levels you're going to get a special stat roll and that's at levels three six and nine so at level three you're going to get a roll for either light side or dark side alignment at level six you will roll for a faction alignment and at level nine you will roll for a character sp sp specific and we can see on the right all the possible options for these but also underneath this I up here next to the season name for the mod we get basically all this information again here's the quick summary of all the possibilities level 3 level 6 level 9 so it can be dark or light these three factions are targeted this season and these are the potential characters for your level 9 ability you can break it down even farther the level 3 ability the level 3 bonus I got was dark side and I rolled this one whenever dark side allies start their turn for each enemy with fewer than four debuffs that ally gains 30% potency until end of turn not too bad probably throw that on Darth Revan help uh, boost up you know uh, Batsla you know of his application of those debuffs um, so I saw all that not too bad um, however the light side the bonuses are literally exactly the same the only thing that's changing here is dark or light in the wording and you'll find that until we get to the character yes that's, that's that's pretty much going to be how it is the same here for the most part it looks like there's some small differences like so we can see here you know the top this is specific to galactic republic this is specific to inquisitorius however you know this retaliate ability is the same you know and um, inflict a debuff for 10% uh, bonus damage we see that here as well um, so there's definitely going to be some overlaps it looks like but it looks like there is some variety going on so make sure you're reading specifics because I totally wasn't and that's why there's that cut there because I needed to clarify exactly so there is some overlap between these potential abilities or ability rolls or stat boosts or whatever you want to call them I'll probably just keep calling them stat boosts um, with the faction rolls so um, make sure you're paying close attention to them because this is a level at which you can re-roll so you have the option to try again you're not going to be stuck necessarily with what you get just know that you know if you don't you know don't like what you get you might get something that you also don't like so it's a gamble as to whether or not you want to do that re-roll so and I do want to clarify I don't think I pointed out earlier when, uh, when you're doing the level 3 roll not only are you getting a dark or light side alignment you're also getting one of the listed uh, stats or bonuses uh, that go with it so then when you get down to level 9 you can see how each of the characters are going to be sh uh, get affected one of these potentials so I was really liking uh, Finn's. I'm really hoping I get this one right here for Finn. Whenever an enemy is stunned, Finn takes a bonus turn. That would be really fun. Especially in, uh, you know, 
the PvP setting. You know, I might use my J Ray team all the time against you know B or C level teams, so Finn is really crucial for crowd control with the stun. So, you know, if I can stun and then stun again and stun again and stun again, that's gonna be awesome. So uh, make sure you familiarize yourself with what you might be going up against or what you might be getting uh, by checking out all of these. I was a little underwhelmed with Yoda's right here. There's definitely some that have a leader tag bonus or a leader slot bonus like Yoda and Finn. So you might have a new lead based on your Datacron. Uh, not a whole new lead ability but you know you'll be putting that character into the leader slot if they're not normally someone you do like I don't run a Yoda lead but hey maybe I put him in because I want that bonus I'm not going to I don't want that bonus but that's just an example and to finish off going down the list of, of uh, the breakdowns Stats, this is the same information that we saw listed on the primary screen for the Datacron on the right as we selected the individual level. So, you know, you'll notice the bonuses get better at the higher levels, whereas, you know, at the beginning we could have had health 1 to 5, now we in four to five, in the level 4 to 5 we have health 5 to 10, health steal 100 to 175, and the level 7 to 8. 7 to 8, of course, we get even better bonuses. Bro, that 300% health steal, though, that'd be super fun. And just some general information. So, but do remember going back to the relic requirements for the bonuses. As you level up your Datacron, your required relic level will also increase. Luckily, Relic 5's a pretty easy... Uh, level to achieve these days especially if you are part of the like target audience for Datacrons, the very big well-developed rosters, the long-term veteran players who just have a bunch of material sitting around that can help you get through your relic levels so you'll be able to get to here no, no problem if you're an established player. If you're new to relic levels or you're a new account then maybe you will have a little bit of a lag where you, you stop everyone at 3 instead of stopping everyone at Relic 5. And at least with this first run, level 7 is also decently achievable, especially compared to Relic 8. So you will probably see some people getting the level 9 bonus. Uh, but this does require an entire team, and I know it's not common for an entire team to be Relic 7, so that might be where we see the holdup there. So now that we've got basically the overview of them out of the way, let's actually take a look at the process of leveling one up. So we'll jump over to my level one. Um, so I've only done the first level. I unlocked it already. Got 4.74% health. So I rolled a heck of a lot better than I did on the first roll for my other one. Almost got to the max there. So to do a increase your level, you're going to need the appropriate materials. So think of this just like slicing for relic levels or, or upgrading for relic levels. There's a variety of things you need and then you need the currency. So this is the Mark I version of whatever they're calling it. You're going to need a Mark II version eventually and then a Mark III version and when you want to re-roll there will be a similar tier of current of materials that you need as well. So we're going to go ahead, I've got the material, we'll take a roll for my level 2 stat. Ah, plus 52.83% health steal. So, on the low end, but getting more health steals, I'm almost <laughs> getting the same Datacron practically as I already have. So, I garbage. I don't seem to have enough of the tier 1 to do a level 3 roll. Let me take a quick break and see if I can't get some. Alright, I was able to pick up enough to do a level 3 roll, so here we go. And it is a light side, so it's not going to be the same Datacron. That's nice.
I would have kind of felt a little miffed if I got literally the same data cron. So we got a light side character uh, roll and we got this bonus. When we daze or stun, uh, the character doing the dazing and stunning gets 10% health and protection. Hmm, that sounds like I should put that on a Padme team. So now I'm out of the tier 1 material and I cannot buy any more without spending real money which I'm not going to be doing at this point. So I'm only going up to level 3. But, looks like we could re-roll if we wanted to. I like this for now. I'm going to keep that. I think I'm going to re-roll my first one because I don't really see this applying to much more in my roster other than just Darth Revan. So I'm going to try re-rolling it and seeing if I can't get something that's a bit more applicable to a wider range on my roster. So, re-rolling requires different materials than leveling up. I think for leveling up, it's acumen, and this is alteration. Uh, we could take, we could, we'll be able to see what they're all called when we look at the shipments later on in the video. So, this is tier one of the required material. So, let's re-roll that. And, ooh, alright, select the bonus mechanic you want. The one on the left is always the one you had before. You can keep it if you don't like other options. That's pretty cool. Uh, however, we do have the warning down here that the reroll cost will not be refunded. So keep that in mind as you go about wanting to reroll. That it is, even if you don't like what you get, you are out those materials that you put into it. So I could do a light side for 2% health and protection when they gain a buff. Or I can go dark side, start their turn with at least two buffs that can be dispelled. They gain 5% offense stacking until end of encounter. Hmm. And that's that. What's this do for us? Okay, so we could re-roll again if we wanted to, if we had the supplies for it. So if we don't like the two that we re-rolled, we could roll again if we had the materials, but I do not. So I think I'm going to... Keep. I think I'll keep it. So. Alright, so now we get this cool little bit. Once a data cron is fully upgraded, any level can be rerolled, even stat boosts. That's pretty cool. So if we don't like my I don't like my level one roll, so once I get this bad boy up to level nine, I could re-roll my level one stat if I wanted to. But it might be a while before I get to level 9. We'll have to wait and see. So that should just about cover what a Datacron is and how you go about benefiting from it and increasing it. So real quick, you know, I'm sure this is self-explanatory, but I'll, we'll go ahead and show how you would apply a Datacron real quick. So that's not where I wanted to go. I wanted to go here. So, you know, if we had one that we wanted to put on defense, um, we'd find a team. So, since mine are only at level 3, I only need a Relic 3 team to put them on. But, unfortunately, the two that I would love to put them on, either the light side one for uh, Padme or the dark side one for... Darth Revan do not qualify because I have a gear 12 character on the teams which means I cannot put a Datacron on there. We even get a nice little pop-up if we try. Boom. No valid Datacrons. Everyone needs to be level 3. So that means the only one I could put it on would be uh, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. And now that I'm seeing this, I'm actually really glad I decided to come in here 
and show this off. I hadn't originally planned on it, I just did this on a whim, but we're seeing some good information here that's good to know. So we can see that the currently selected data cron, I got a nice warning over here that tells me, hey, this level 3 bonus does not apply to any characters in my current squad, which we see up here. So that's pretty cool. So that's going to help us optimize our selection. And here it shows us who all is benefiting in the squad. That's everybody, because everyone's a dark side character. Here are our stat boosts underneath of our central uh, picture here. And we can toggle between how they're laid out for us, whether it's just the icons or the icons and the bonuses. Um, some filter options up here. So uh, make sure that you take advantage of this screen and these warnings and everything that uh, so you can apply accurately. I'm not going to equip at the moment. I kind of want to wait a bit more until we get a bit closer to Grand Arena or Territory War and see how my data crowds have developed since then before I make a decision at the moment. So now we'll talk about how do you get Datacrons. And Datacrons have been promoted as the main way you get them is through Conquest. Uh, there's a couple other ways and to talk about those we'll take a look at the Road Ahead post where they talk about it. But first, since Conquest is the primary way to get it, let's go ahead and start taking a look at Conquest. So I checked out earlier and the only mm, tiers that grant datacrons are normal and hard. So, um, we'll take a look real quick at the reward track for normal. So you get your first datacron with 40 tickets. And then you do get a datacron in your very first reward crate. So as long as you get 80 tickets on normal, boom, you have yourself two datacrons, which is pretty cool. Uh, but then along the free-to-play track, uh, you got another one towards the end at 274 tickets, and then that's it. So you'll get you'll get two plus the one in your reward crate, which at the maximum level for normal. Here's what you get. You get your Datacron. You get the Tier 1 for leveling up, so Acumen. So that's your level up Tier 1, level up Tier 2, level up Tier 3. And then this is your reroll uh, material alteration. So alteration 1, reroll 1, reroll 2, reroll 3. And then here is your Datacron currency. So that's what you get for being a normal conquest completer. We will come back and take a look at the premium reward tracks for normal and hard a little bit later in the video when we cover the pay to win aspect of Datacron. So now we're just going to take a quick look at the reward track for hard. You get your first Datacron at 56 tickets and you get your second one in your first reward crate and then you get a, another Datacron at 397 tickets, and then that's it. So either way, you know, if you get max crate for normal or hard, you will get a total of three Datacrons on the free-to-play track. So that's pretty cool. Um, and your maximum reward crate for hard would look like this. You still only get the one Datacron and you get tier 1, 2, and 3 level up materials, tier 1, 2, and 3 slicing, or not slicing, reroll materials, and you get the Datacron currency. <clears throat> so that's that's all well and good, knowing what you get at the high level, but I and I'm sure a majority of the player base don't get max crate reward. I typically get crate 3 or 4 on hard. So we'll take a look at what that looks like. So that would be crate 1, 2, here's crate 3. So you'll get 
at this level you'll only get two datacrons, the one in the reward track and this one, and you'll get this much of your tier 1, 2, and 3 level ups, tier 1, 2, and 3 rerolls, and you'll get 2 million datacron currency. If you make it to uh, reward crate 4, you still get two at this point, you haven't earned that second one in the reward track, and your level and reroll materials and 2.2 mil datacron currency. So, um, like I said, we will come back and evaluate the premium reward track later on in the end of the video when we are covering the pay to win aspect. And that's also when we'll take a look at the pass. I haven't yet activated the pass because I wanted to keep bouncing back and forth between the two difficulties to show you guys the visuals. So we'll take a look at the pass once I've committed to hard mode. So we're going to bounce over to the road ahead blog post real quick to take a look at how else and where else we will be getting datacrons from. So outside of Conquest, we will also be getting some from Territory Wars, Weekly Shipments, and Daily Login Calendars, along with packs and bundles. I was taking a look earlier, and at time of recording, there were no packs and bundles currently being offered, probably because we're in the exhibition season for this new game feature. So it wouldn't surprise me if we don't see packs and bundles until after they've concluded their, you know, initial testing and exhibition of datacrons and then we'll probably start seeing the packs and bundles but as of right now we don't have any of those we currently don't have any calendars specific for them it wouldn't surprise me if next month as part of the monthly calendar we see some of the level up and reroll materials as a daily login reward within the calendar and we'll take a look at the shipment page in a couple minutes when we get to that part of the video. So, um, they break down exactly how you'll be getting certain rewards from where, if you want to take a look at this, this is in the road ahead from June, uh, the road ahead for June 2022, so you can pull that up if you feel like going in depth about all of that. Um, and then we will be uh, getting some from end of season dismantling. Um, you can also dismantle earlier. I didn't show that off that feature off yet because I have nothing I want to dismantle. But that is a way that you can get materials, uh, as shown here. So as I was rereading this post just now while showing it off to you, I remind myself that there is also a second way within Conquest to earn your Datacrons. Each sector in Conquest will now have a special treasure node at the end that rewards Datacrons. What is a treasure node? Well, I'm glad you asked between uh, a couple minutes ago and now I have gone ahead and locked into hard mode for conquest so we can see what a treasure node looks like at least in the first sector and I have no reason to think that it'll differ from sector to sector so this will probably be how it's set up across all of it uh, your treasure node here is all the way at the end past the sector boss and this is optional so it's not mandatory so that's pretty cool. Uh, they're not going to commit you to a battle against your will and, and force you to use your energy if you don't want to and your stamina. So we have two different reward crates here. Uh, first we'll drop either a whole datacron itself or some currency and we can get a small amount of acumen and alteration Yeah, for leveling up and re-rolling. So if you reach that point where you have like done all the feats you think you're going to be doing, but you, and you don't know what to do with the rest of the conquest time, then you can do these um, these treasure notes. 
and they said in the road ahead that later sectors are going to have better rewards so it wouldn't surprise me if in like sector four we're getting more than one to five or one to three you know as as our minimum drops so um so now we have a real incentive to come back to conquest i know this was a game mode that as they continue to make changes really started turning people off to the game mode and drove them away from the game mode so i think one of the goals that they're trying to accomplish here is bringing people back to conquest by encouraging them to do well to seek the higher and better rewards here all right i've mentioned it a couple times told you guys we'd get to it later well later has finally arrived so let's take a look at the shipment page for datacrons overall i was pleased with this page um, you notably cannot pay crystals to refresh this, so you are stuck on this countdown. So that helps minimize the pay to win aspect, but I'm getting ahead of myself, that's for the end of the video. So you have a couple of different currencies with which to buy things in here. You can of course use crystals, surprise surprise, you can buy yourself a whole datacron as well as some material. There's the currency. I bought some of the material earlier. So that's that. Acumen is the leveling up material. So I bought some of the leveling up material already. And then you can, uh, so you know, there's the tier 3 stuff. You can buy alteration for the rerolls with crystals as well. You know, there's level 3 stuff. This section right here that I bought out completely, this was with shard shop currency. If you're like me and you are a long time player or you are in the end game now and you're not really leveling up a lot of different characters anymore, you're not farming characters, then you've probably got a large collection of shard shop currencies sitting around. And I've heard some people say there's not too much that's worthwhile in the shard shop. So the currency kind of just builds. Well, now you have another outlet for it. I bought a whole Datacron with shard currency bought a million currency with shard currency bought all this acumen and alteration here with shard shop currency as well as we now have another outlet to use ally points in and aside from the like two shipments in the weekly shipment tab and buying chromium packs or bronzing whichever one they were you know, you had nothing to do with, with uh, ally points. Well, now you can. If you, you know, you undoubtedly have just a lot of them sitting around. Uh, unless you've done something dumb like I have and just blown through packs just to get rid of your currency. Because who knew that we would end up actually needing this in the future. So I was not able to buy a, you know, another one because I don't have that much social currency anymore. And, you know, you can, again, buy everything else that you could up top, but with ally points. So now, you know, let's maybe not do dumb stuff with our ally points anymore, um, says the one calling the kettle black. Um, but yeah, we, you know, I've got your acumen, your alteration, your currency. So th using these two game currencies that just stockpile, this is a really good move. And I, you know, I really like that. I find that it helps make the introduction of, of Datacrons a little more palatable because this shipment page is much more accessible uh, now. You know, you have two other ways to buy stuff if you are not going to use crystals. So you're not completely screwed if you don't use crystals. That was really considerate of them. And pleasantly surprising so I was really happy to see that one last note I want to touch on before we hit the meat of the video you know is this good or bad is this in favor of pay to win or free to play uh, one last note that I wanted to point out is at the very end of the section in the road ahead they talk about uh, after the exhibition or, or you know shortly after launch we will put Datacrons in Squad Arena 
so players can understand their impact before locking into Grand Arena or Territory Wars. So that's pretty cool. We'll be able to test our data crowns before it really matters. You know, Squad Arena has fallen to the wayside now ever since the revision of Grand Arena to what it or is, or Grand, yeah, Grand Arena to what it is now. So uh, we'll be able to test, with, play, play with them, see how they do before we lock ourselves into something where our crystal income is on the line, which was my biggest concern. One of my biggest concerns, you know, was how does this change our crystal income? Because, you know, crystal income is pretty consistent, and some people really depend on their Grand Arena crystal income, like myself. So, uh, we won't have to jeopardize our income with testing and seeing how things work. Uh, we will have this short window to do that in Squad Arena. So now we can talk about the, I don't know, it's not really an elephant in the room, it's probably an obvious focus that a lot of people have been fo fo talking about, is the monetization aspect, the pay-to-win aspect that comes with Datacrons. You know, how much is this going to benefit whales and how much is this going to hurt free-to-play players? I think as of right now, though, how things stand on this day one release, Overall, I don't think pay-to-win players are going to be getting too much of an advantage. Um, part of it kind of depends on this cooldown, how fast that cools down, if it's going to be two days every time, or is it going to be a week? Which would determine how many that you can buy with crystals. Uh, but since you can't force a cooldown, you know, can't force a refresh of this, that's one you know, roadblock in the way of preventing a pay-to-win spam there. Um, they did mention free and paid calendars, which they currently don't have, but if you, know, if you can pay money to get a daily reward calendar that rewards Datacrons, who knows if it would be one or multiple, you know, then that would be another way to put a pay-to-win uh, a pay or a pay yeah pay-to-win account a foot above you know, a step above a free-to-play account um, but as well as the packs and bundles that they said that they will offer but are currently not it's really this is really where it matters uh, what is in these packs and bundles that they will be offering you know are you getting you getting you know a you know two three four five data crons plus material enough materials to level them up to levels three five whatever or are you just getting one you know set or once we have more are you getting a chance to get a certain you know chance to get one from any of the valid or currently running sets uh, so the biggest and easiest and obvious pay to win uh, tactic would be these bundles and packs which we currently cannot evaluate unfortunately uh, they could go all in on this and make it a hell a hell of a lot of um, difference between the benefits of pay to win versus a free to play you know these packs could really just suck as a free to play player um, but would really be what you're looking for as a pay-to-win player? We don't know. We cannot judge that information yet. Um, what we can... Oh, like I said earlier, I think that stuff will come in after the exhibition season, though. So here's that. We're doing initial judgment this video, and we'll do final judgment. You know, We'll have to do final judgment after we see this stuff start coming into the game. So what we can look at, though, is the premium uh, tracks and the pass for Conquest, since this is a pay-to-win distinction, but it's currently not too bad. Um, and since I've locked in, I won't be able to take a look at the normal premium track, but it follows pretty much the same tendency as the hard mode track you're not getting too much uh, out of the premium track compared to the normal track. So one of the things I 
mentioned earlier is we need to take a look at the conquest pass itself buying the pass uh, either value or the, buying the $30 pass does not grant you datacrons or material at all this was a fear of mine is that you paid you know 30 bucks get the pass plus and boom one two three four whatever datacrons and material you know like uh, but fortunately that did not come through for now knock on wood so you will not be getting a leg up for conquest pass for datacrons uh, you will get a small boost for the premium pass though but it's along the same lines as your additional shards like cumulatively across your premium rewards the number of shards you get overall is really insignificant and totals up to like less than a reward crate worth of character shards so you know we'll take a look here and see what we're getting our first instance of datacrons coming into the reward track is at 84 for hard mode you just get 25 of the tier of the tier 2 and then you get 20 tier 3 25 of the alteration for your rerolls that's tier 2 you know tier 3 alteration you know there's not a crate of datacron stuff that you're getting out of this path you know you're getting one datacron here at 295 tickets this is the first instance of getting a datacron that free to play is not because you're already remember you're already getting the bottom one as well so this will be your second datacron outside of your reward crate but that is also the only datacron you get so if you're looking for the premium track to earn you buku datacrons it's not you're only going to come out uh, one datacron ahead compared to a free-to-play player and yeah the amount of materials that you get to re-roll and level them up is not a whole lot there's you know of course like most things you know it, when it adds up you know it's going to add up but it's not such a glaringly obvious uh, benefit to use the pass so yeah yeah of course you know if you roll really well on the datacron you got from the premium pass yeah of course that's going to have a big impact but this is nowhere near as bad as it could have been we could have had you know reward crates you know like similar to these where you were getting datacron stuff knock on wood cg don't take this idea um but you know it's, it's really tame and so that's one that was one of my biggest fears was just the monetizing the heck out of the premium pass so that way you could get better datacrons and better datacron related rewards so you know overall if i had to like sum up how i think this is in regards to pay to win or free to play i think i've kind of made that known uh, but overall i don't think this is as bad as we were fearing it's as things stand right now i don't think this is game killing i don't think this is going to impact the free to play versus pay to win mechanics too much of course it'll be felt and it'll be there but you know i think my worst fears did not come to pass i was very afraid of how this is going to be um but this is nowhere near as extreme to the levels as it could have been now does that mean that this is an okay mechanic to introduce into the game arguably not i mean datacrons are after all a temporary investment you only get them for a couple months before you have to turn around and start your collection not all over again but you have to start a third of your collection all over again so a temporary investment is always going to come up short versus well, get maybe not always but temporary investment more often than not will probably fall short of a long-term investment and i get i get it right this is to introduce a rotating meta so that the same teams aren't always winning everything 
There's probably another way things could have been done to introduce that. I am not smart enough to figure out what that could have been. But with what we're getting saddled with with Datacrons, uh, looking, if you look back at the initial reaction to the community from the uh, private test leak, this is nowhere near as bad as things could have been. So let's be thankful and proceed with caution because as I've mentioned a couple times, this is day one. Things will undoubtedly change as the exhibition continues and as the calendars and packs and bundles get introduced, then I think that's where we will see the jump in favor towards pay to win if things end up going that route. So for now, day one, things are okay. It's probably not an easy pill for everyone to swallow. I still feel a little uneasy about it myself, but I'm feeling a lot of reassurance so far from what I've seen about how accessible they've made the shipments store and to how limiting it is in regards to the rewards you're getting as a pay to win track. So we'll just have to wait and see. Thanks for stopping by guys. If you have any questions or comments or criticisms about this or anything that I missed, please put it down below in the comments or feel free to message me in the discord, uh, either in the general chat or direct message. I'll be more than happy to talk this out. I think the main thing to remember, guys, is that this is not done. We will see changes to it, undoubtedly. And let's try to keep a level head about this. I was very panicked and frustrated, and I was ranting to a couple people, and I was ranting in the general channel of our Discord. You know, I was, I was adamant that that this was, you know, the end of the game. Gosh, this was awful. But, um. Once that stuff cooled down, once I cooled down from that, and after having seen all this now, this is nowhere near as bad as it could have been. So I would advise you guys, you know, let's, you know, let's, let's be open to how this is going to impact the game. This isn't the end of it. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, this, I know this probably isn't what some people wanted to hear, and you know, I'm sorry about that, but this is how I see it. Alright guys, as always, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate all the attention that you guys give to me and my videos and my channel. I know I typically have some of the longer ones out there, but as I've mentioned previously, I would rather have all the information in one place for you instead of having you keep track of playlists and multiple videos and all that stuff. So, for those of you guys who managed to make it to the end of this, know that I really do appreciate your patronage that you're willing to put up with length in order to get all the information all at once. Thank you guys so much, and have a good rest of your day.